Since January of this year, the Arlington Senior Center has been holding regular cooking classes for its members. It's an opportunity for them to learn about the concepts of healthy eating, and it gives them hands-on experience in creating healthy meals. We have a great lunch and learn program that stresses the importance of eating and how important adding more fruits and vegetables is to, to your diet, not only for our body but for our mind. But what we were lacking was a place for our community to apply what they have learned. And not only apply it, but do it in a social engaging format. And that's where we develop the cooking classes and hopefully it'll turn into more of a small group supper club format. Today, the group is learning about the ways that cauliflower can be incorporated into their diet as a healthy alternative, such as the crust for a pizza. We have seen more and more how much what we eat affects our, how our brain works, our memory, and things like that, as well as our joints and how able we are to move. So far, the reaction to the cooking classes has been very positive. Healthy eating can actually taste good while being good for you. They have tried new things that they would not have tried before and you'll get about 75% are like, yeah, this is great. We had one time I made them cupcakes and it didn't tell them it was vegan cupcakes with flaxseed and so forth. And they actually loved it. It tastes just like a chocolate cupcake. So it's been interesting and fun, definitely. On a Wednesday morning at the South Memphis Farmer's Market, a cooking class is learning the finer points of making spaghetti and meatballs. This class is part of a 10-week curriculum called the Aging Mastery Program, which covers everything from exercise to financial fitness to medication management. All of the topics are life skills that every one of the participants has dealt with and experienced, but the classes make the seniors focus on the topics in a new light. In essence, the program is to assist with what they're already doing to enable them to do it a little better and longer. No doubt some of the participants in this class have been cooking spaghetti and meatballs all their lives. But the Aging Mastery instructor is teaching these students to make this meal from scratch using healthy ingredients. Why buy the expensive pre-made pasta sauce when you can make your own and make it taste better? Mastering the life skills we've already learned and applying them to life in our 60s, 70s and beyond is a goal that will enable more and more older citizens to age in place. On a Tuesday morning at Church Health in Crosstown Concourse, a group of medical professionals and students are exploring the expanding field of culinary medicine. Well, what we're trying to do is to teach people how to eat healthier. Um, healthy grocery store strategies, um, simple recipes they can go home and make, uh, everything at a local grocery store, um, teaching folks that you don't have to go to a fancy store to cook delicious healthy meals at home. Um, one thing we always try to incorporate in our classes is proper portion sizes. So I think a lot of people are doing better choosing healthier foods at the store, but the portion's still a little off. So that's a big component of our class too. At the end of every session, the class plates up the proper portion size and they go around and show it to, um, to the group. These culinary medicine classes equip health professionals with cooking and nutrition basics that can then be passed on to their patients. All of our recipes are based on the Mediterranean diet, um, getting in whole grains, plenty of fruits, plenty of vegetables, lean meats, lean proteins, uh, olive oils, nut seeds, healthy fats, uh, fruits and vegetables, um, and whole grains when you can. And, um, you know, dairy products can fit as well, um, but we say two to three servings of dairy a day. Even though these classes teach nutritional guidelines that can benefit people of any age, they take on increased importance as we get older. As we get older, um, our bodies tend to slow down a bit and uh, we don't need as many calories um, as we did maybe when we were 15 to 20. So um, it's very important, extra important for us to get those good calories um, and make the most of our calories. Uh, things, a lot of superfoods out there, broccoli, sweet potatoes, uh, um, strawberries, things like that, spinach, and those are all things we can incorporate into um, our diets as we age. I've invited three guests from Church Health to discuss the healthy foods that should be on our plates as we age. Sharon Moore is the Manager of Wellness Education and Nutrition. 
Melissa Peterson is the Kitchen Operations Manager. And you've met Carolyn Nichols, the Nutrition Education Coordinator. We've all been told all of our lives that, that healthy eating, good nutrition, it's important. But does healthy eating and good nutrition take on more importance as we age? Absolutely. Uh, why? And the reason being is that as we age, we tend to be less active. And if we're less active, then we need fewer, nutri fewer calories. Uh, or you could have health conditions that you're taking medication for that can affect your taste or your desire to eat, your appetite. As you get older, you may have dental issues that affect the way you chew your food. So there's lots of factors that could go in to the amount that you eat. In that respect, do, does our digestive system change as we age? That does And does that, does that affect what we eat or what we want to eat? Well, it may affect the way you eat uh, because just like our muscles tend to lose elasticity as we age, that happens with our organs as well. And our digestive organs, what pushes the food through our digestive system is a series of muscle movements. So if those are not as strong as they used to be, then the food doesn't pass through as effectively as it used to. So you may want to uh, choose foods that are higher in fiber in order to assist that process. When I sit down to eat and I look down at my plate, what does a healthy plate of food look like? Well, um, you wanna make sure you uh, have all the nutrients represented um, in a, on a perfect plate. Um, whole grains, vegetables, fruits, dairy, um, small amounts of protein. Um, at our, uh, in our classes at Church Health, what we do is focus on the Mediterranean diet. And um, half of our plate should be full of fruits and vegetables. Um, a quarter of it should be protein and a quarter of it should be whole grains, something like uh, brown rice, um, uh, whole wheat bread, and hopefully uh, on a perfect plate, something on the side, which is dairy, uh, milk, if you're not a big milk person, maybe some yogurt, a little bit of cheese, something like that, and plenty of water. Are there specific nutrients that older eaters <laughs> should be looking to put into their diet? Kind of depends on the person mm -hmm. and you know what they what their doctor has prescribed or what their needs are because everybody ages differently at different rates and so paying attention to it and getting those nutrients out of your food it, that's your fuel for the day um, that's the place that you get it so you got to pay attention to it. it but typically, an older person needs to be very conscious of the calcium, vitamin D, and B12. Those are the three biggest ones for someone aging. And you have to know what foods can give you those, correct? Right, right. How and do you find out that kind of information? Well, with the internet now, you can <laughs> Google anything, you know, and it's really accessible. Um, and most seniors are pretty savvy with the internet. They can find a lot of information about nutrition, good information. You can go to the CDC, um, or you can go to uh, eatright.org. I mean, there's a lot of sources out there to get good information. And old school, libraries and books. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, you mentioned doctors. Yes. Um, does our own health, meaning if we may have chronic diseases or illnesses, uh, what role does food play in dealing with that? If, I, I mean, I, I personally think it's everything in that you're putting food as one of the most voluminous things that you put into your body and that's the building blocks for everything whether it's treating a, a chronic condition or just keeping you energized and alert and active um, food is what's going to do that so if you're giving it good stuff it can do good things um, if you give it not great stuff it's not gonna well let's talk about the good stuff what is the good stuff what's the stuff we should eat what's the stuff we should avoid we want to get away from saying there's good foods and bad foods because um, so we don't have we don't want to have a negative association with a certain type of food and those sometimes foods would be things like cake brownies um, M &Ms, All the that like, I want jelly to beans eat. Um, soda things like that would be every now and then foods and foods that are always foods daily foods would be a lot of whole grains uh, spinach bananas apples um, milk plenty of water. Um, lean proteins, uh, things like chicken breasts, beans, lentils, uh, healthy fats, um, nuts, seeds, avocados, olive oil, um, things like that. Those are all your good foods to eat uh, more abundantly and, and small and you know reasonable amounts. And, um, and the every now and then foods save on special occasions. 
Well, let's talk about portion size because mm -hmm. you talk about reasonable amount. What's a mm -hmm. reasonable? How do you um, know the portion size that you need to eat? The um, most helpful tool is can it fit in my hand? You know, if if something if, if the portion can fit in my hand, that's probably the right portion size. For example, one scoop of ice cream, one piece of pizza, one small scoop of lasagna. Um, so that's a good good visual for a lot of folks. And that's not in your hand every time you go back to the buffet, right? Right. <laughs> okay. right. I want to make right. that one clear. And I would encourage people, you know, it, when you eat at home, if you think about our plates, like I did this, my grandmother gave me her dinner plates when she passed away. And when you compare her dinner plate to the dinner plates that you see today, her dinner plate is like the luncheon plate now. So, you know, everything has gotten bigger. So we need to be very aware of what the serving size looks like on our own dishes at home. So I would encourage people to measure at least, you know, for a week or so, so that you become very cognizant of what it looks like on your plate and you know that you're not getting more than you need because we tend to eat more than our bodies really need. And the same with glasses. Yes. Cups and, uh, and glasses, the yeah. serving size has gotten just exponentially larger. And so when you're having something that's a sweet treat like sweet tea uh, or a, sh a sugar drink, they're now huge as opposed to it used to be little. Yes, the bottomless class of yeah. sweet Yeah, they don't tea. even make juice glasses anymore. Right. You try to find a juice glass, you can't <laughs> find it. Mm -hmm. But that is a serving, a half a cup. You know, you're gonna get this when you go out. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just the way we're being served today. So over time, you begin to think that that's correct More when in better. fact it's yeah, not, yeah. yes. You know, we talked earlier about the changes that our bodies go through as we age, and certainly metabolism slows down. And I would think that would make it much harder to maintain what a healthy weight. What is a healthy weight? How do you determine a healthy weight? Because you know, in the end, that's one of the things we gauge our eating habits by. Uh, so how do, you, how do you know what is a healthy weight? Well, typically, if you, you know, your doctor's gonna check your BMI, and that is your weight divided by your, it's your weight in kilograms divided by your height in centimeters squared. I mean, that's a lot of mumbo lot jumbo. Of <laughs> but basically, when you go to the doctor, you need your BMI needs to be somewhere between 18.5 and 24.9, somewhere in that in that range. And there's all kinds of of um, charts out there. Again, the internet. You can just well. There's probably an app for it. There are. Yeah. There, the, you know, there's these automatic calculators, and you can put it in. But you know, when you go to the doctor, ask your doctor about that. What is my BMI? Those are things we need to know, just like our blood pressure and our cholesterol. Those are things that you should know about yourself. Uh, when I go shopping for food, <laughs> I think it can be confusing. Mainly the nutrition labels. Please tell me how to interpret those nutrition labels that are on all of our foods these days. What do we what do we need to look for? Well, the first thing we want to look for when we read a nutrition label is look at the serving size because there's so many different packages now, um, certain sizes, certain different containers, and um, we want to make sure we look at the serving size first because we have more choices now at the store than ever before, um, and things are always changing. Uh, these manufacturers are always changing the packaging and the sizing and uh, the portion sizes of various foods. So look at the serving size and then look at the nutrients on it. And um, a lot of, of us tend to look at nutrition labels for different things, um, different reasons. Uh, for example, you might have high blood pressure. So you're looking at the sodium. Um, and then you see the percentages on the side too. And anything that says 20%, that's a percent of your daily value on the, on to the right of the nutrition label, anything over 20% is considered high which can be good or a bad thing. If it's 20% or more of sodium, that's not so good, right? But if it says 20% of your fiber, well, that is good, all right? So it just kind of depends on, so on you, what you're looking for. You and have to kind of educate yourself before you read that label. Correct, right. So what, what we want to do, uh, first and foremost, look at the serving size and just try to eat the, the right serving size. And what about ingredients? Food. Should we look at the mm -hmm. ingredients and what, how do you? Right, right. Um, you know, foods now have so many ingredients, uh, a lot of um, packaged foods, that is. Um, so we want to look for foods with few ingredients, um, ingredients that we can pronounce. If you look at a, a label and it's, I don't know, um, a bag of chips or some snack mix and it has this many ingredients and a lot of them you can't pronounce, then 
there's probably a better choice out there for you. Maybe you can make your own snack mix with some almonds and Cheerios and uh, a little raisins, something like that. Be now, a better choice. Now, when, when you're out shopping, uh, is there a, is this a myth? Is it a myth that eating healthy costs more? Meaning I have to go out and buy organic this and organic that. Yes, that's a myth. Um, it is? Yes, I think you can still eat a perfectly healthy, balanced diet and not have it cost a whole lot of money. In our classes at Church Health, what we do, we get all of our groceries at the regular grocery store. Um, we don't go to a fancy, um, you know, all organic store. We go to a very uh, a grocery store that's accessible to to everybody. And in that context, let's talk some specifics. I'm shopping um, frozen vegetables versus fresh. Mm -hmm. is, is there a big nutritional difference between um, them? No, not really. And actually sometimes, even depending better. on the season, yeah. it could be even better because yeah. these fruits and vegetables are picked at the peak of ripeness, you know, and uh, frozen, sometimes, you know, cooked and then frozen, sometimes not, depending on what it is. And um, it could be even better because uh, we don't know how long those strawberries have been sitting on the shelf, right? Yeah. Or how many people have been touching that apple and how long it's been sitting there. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And another good rule of thumb to just kind of make it simple for people is when you go to the grocery store, shop from the periphery of the store. If you think about it, when you walk into, let's say, Kroger, you typically walk into the produce section, and if you go around the periphery, your fresh meats, then you're going to have your dairy, you know, all, all at the frozen area. If you shop from the periphery for the majority of your groceries, you're going to be getting the most nutrient dense foods. The foods that are on the <laughs> aisles in between, <laughs> there's some reason why they can sit on that shelf for as long mm -hmm. as they can, and the reason is because they have all these additives and preservatives. So if you buy less from those rows and more from the periphery, you're going to be getting most of the nutrient And the labels food. get really easy on the fruits mm. and vegetables because there are not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you want to make it real yeah. simple? That, that's in the simple. So that's just a good rule of thumb. You mentioned, you used the phrase nutrient dense mm -hmm. foods. What does that mean? And well, what is a nutrient dense food? Well, a nutrient dense food is a food by calorie has the most nutrients. So let's say something, um, the nutrient dense foods would be things like spinach and kale, all the leafy greens, the fruits and vegetables, um, lentils, beans. They're very dense in good uh, minerals and vitamins and all those things that our body needs in order to be able to work at its optimal um, level. And so as, I mean, to your point about aging, as we get older, and possibly we're not as active, we don't need as many calories as we did when we were in our 20s. So we need to be sure that the foods that we are eating, the calories we're taking in are nutrient dense for the most part, because we like to say that food is medicine. So think about your food as just one of the most important things. Like mm -hmm. Melissa said, it's, it's the most important thing that you're taking in every day. It's more important than the pills. You know, you, you can get off of some of the pills if you eat right. So it's, it's super important in your overall care. When, when we're cooking, and let's say we have a particular condition, high blood pressure, for example, let's say we're salt sensitive. What do I use to substitute for salt? Well, there's, um there's a lot of good herbs and seasonings out there, um, a whole line of salt-free seasonings you can use. Um, in our cooking classes, we use a lot of onions and garlic, um, a lot of peppers if you like spicy things. Um, a lot of times you can add peppers, uh, um, red pepper flakes, and sometimes when you get that heat going on, you miss that salt component. Um, if you're not a big you know, spicy fan, a lot of people don't like spicy foods. So you could do lemon juice, lime juice, uh, lime zest, lemon zest, um, to add a little acid to the food. Sometimes that helps, um, you know, with that level, that we kind of get that flavor. Um, salt is really hard to mimic the flavor of it, uh, unfortunately, but um, you can add things like vinegars, um, lemon juice. Uh, we use a lot of onions and garlic, and that really helps. Onion powder, garlic powder, um, salt-free seasonings things like that, that'll help. Are there good fats and bad fats? Mm-hmm, we have um, uh, a lot of the good fats we use 
are things like um, almonds, uh, walnuts. Those are two really good healthy fats. We use a lot of avocados in class. Those are a lot of healthy fats and olive oil. Good healthy fats. So you want, the, you want the mono and the polyunsaturated. Those are the ones you want to focus on. So when I look at the label, does it say on the label mono and polyunsaturated? Yes, okay. it will right. say that. Good. All right. um, we've talked about the Mediterranean diet and you told me a little bit about that. But I know as we grow up, we all have our comfort foods. And sometimes they may not be the healthiest choice for us. So how can you incorporate some of these comfort foods into a healthy diet? A little bit goes a long way. Mm -hmm. Whether it's making something like cake or a dessert, a treat, something special, not an everyday occasion, or a little bit of something really good, even though if it's not terribly great for you, a little bit of a great cheese. Um, a little bit of, of sugar in the right place. Um, those small amounts to give you that, that good taste of something and, and make it a reward, not an everyday thing that kind of numbs you to it. So in addition to controlling portion size of your regular meal, control how often you yeah. eat that little Moderation special. Moderation and everything. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. Um, we talked a lot about the food. What about beverages? What should we drink? Water. Water. Water? Yeah. All water. Lots of water. Mm -hmm. Anything more interesting than water? <laughs> well, in the Mediterranean diet, a glass of wine. Mm -hmm. Red oh, wine okay. in particular. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure mm -hmm. uh, some of my viewers will be interested in drinking <laughs> that. And if you need to make your water, and if you don't just like plain water, um, and, you know, some people don't, do what you have to do to get to get it in. Some people like to squeeze lemon in or lime, or some people like to put cucumbers and fresh mint you know, just to make it seem more interesting. So uh, some people like it really cold, so put a lot of ice in it. Just do what you have to do to get that water in, as long as you're not adding a whole lot of sugar and things to it. Well, finally, tell me, give me your best advice about eating healthy as we age. I would say eat according to the Mediterranean principles. Um, you, know, you don't have to eat Mediterranean food, <laughs> but the, the Mediterranean way just, it has, there's so much research behind it. I mean, it's got over 30 years of evidence-based research that shows that it really does either prevent or help manage disease from any age group. And um, it just, all of those nutrient-dense foods we just discussed, the water, uh, exercise, it, it's got every, all of the healthy fats. All of those things are incorporated into uh, that way of eating, and it's it's not hard to do. It's easy. It you can eat like that for a lifetime, and that would be my recommendation. All right. Well, thank you all for telling me what to put on my plate mm -hmm. <laughs> next time I sit down to eat. Thanks for being on the best time. Right, thanks for yes, having us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If you want more information about which healthy foods should be on your plate, go to these informative websites.